Well, look, thank you uh, very much, uh, Tabitha. When Tabitha first asked me to come along to uh, this conference, she said, Sadiq, it's going to be just like Glastonbury, but in London. <laughs> when I saw the weather this morning, she was right, wasn't she? Can I just say it is a pleasure to be here. Before I begin, though, I've been asked to uh, turn off my phone during the course of this uh, speech. So if anybody tweets about me during the course of my speech, <laughs> presidents or anybody else, <laughs> can someone let me know, please? Look, it's, it is a, a, a great to be here on the first day of London Tech Week and to have the honor of opening COGEX, one of the world's largest AI conferences. And Charlie told me it's in fact the biggest AI conference outside of China, we think. So let's begin by giving them a massive round of applause for organizing this. <laughs> now, I know there are many of you here who've traveled from around the world to attend. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all to London. Every year, there's always a great buzz around our city during London Tech Week. Not only because it's an opportunity to see, to showcase, and to discuss the latest tech innovations, but because it serves as the perfect illustration that London remains outward-looking and open to the world. Of course, I recognize there's a lot of uncertainty around Brexit at the moment. But I want you to know that London is and always will be open. Open to business, open to investment, and open to people. As mayor, I'm proud that London has one of the world's leading tech sectors. We're the biggest innovation hub in Europe, home to some of the most dynamic tech businesses anywhere on earth, including over 750 artificial intelligence companies. London is now a place where creative and world-leading civic innovations are adopted or piloted. We led the way with contactless payment on our transport system, a model that's now used around the world. We're using smart technology and data sharing to help tackle air pollution with the new ultra-low emission zone. And if you go to East London, you'll see how we're already a test bed for drones and 5G. But I want us to go even further and fully unlock the benefits that tech innovation can bring to cities like London. Not just to boost our economies, but to harness technology to improve public services and ultimately to transform lives. A crucial part of making the most of innovation is of course about embracing the potential of AI and the incredible benefits it can bring to humanity. In many ways, I believe our global dynamic cities are best placed to take advantage of AI. Because compared to national governments, we're closer to those we represent, and we can adapt much more quickly to those changing needs. Here in London, I'm proud that we're already seeing how AI can deliver a whole range of services, from the use of driverless vehicles in Greenwich to dynamic traffic signaling systems that are automatically easing congestion on our streets. And there's much, much more to come. However, whilst I'm a big advocate for cities to get engaged and motivated to make the most of tech to improve lives, we must also tread extremely carefully. Because as you know, there's no question that the rise of machine learning and AI in city government and around the world in general raises many ethical and privacy issues. It's crucial that we ensure secure rather than undermine the confidence of local citizens. For people need to have trust in tech if we're to make the most of it. And that's what we're setting out to do in London. We're one of the first cities to open a discussion with people about the use of their own data. We're working with other cities such as Helsinki and Amsterdam to develop a new framework for the use of AI to ensure greater public accountability. And we're looking at new ways to store and exchange data safely and securely. As Mayor, I want to continue to lead by example in London, not only in terms of making sure we can make the most of what AI has to offer, but in terms of educating the public, encouraging public debate, and preparing for the potential impact on our society. Unfortunately, 
Like so many other issues in recent years, Brexit seems to have drained central government resources and attention away from one of the most important debates of the day. And so I want to call on our next Prime Minister, whoever that may be, to give AI the attention it deserves. There's no stopping the AI revolution now, and we shouldn't seek to. Rather, we must embrace it and seek to shape it. Let me uh, end by saying this. With such profound questions ahead, the public has a right to be heard and a right to expect democratic leaders to guide them along this delicate path. Because it must ultimately fall to government working with tech businesses and leaders to ensure that AI adoption is always steered towards augmenting, not replacing human thought and endeavor, that citizens will always be at the heart of AI design, and that the public can be reassured that AI will not lead us to some dystopian future, but to a better one for us all. So let's make sure that London and Britain become the true world leaders in AI, both in development of new tech and in how we implement it for good. Thank you and hope have a great, great conference. Thank you so much. Um, that was exactly what I think we need to be hearing this morning. Um, I had a few little questions for you, though. So firstly, I think we have an amazing audience of entrepreneurs who are building things all the time. There's the expo downstairs where you can see the things that they've created, the startup village. What do you think is the biggest opportunity for AI to help Londoners? Well, firstly, can I thank Tabitha for the first question not being about drugs? Uh, <laughs> Second question. <laughs> I think there's huge potential in uh, London. I, as I said during my, my short speech, I think the opportunity for us to have more personalised public services, the opportunity to meet head on some of the challenges uh, we face. I mean, I want you to see London as a hotbed for your ideas. Work with us. Uh, and we're trying to make sure we can give you what you need for your ideas to develop. One of the things we've been doing over the last period since I've been mayor is how can we use technology to help improve air quality in London? So we have now in London the largest number, the most comprehensive uh, air quality monitors of any city in the world, giving Londoners real-time information about the quality of uh, air, really, really important. Uh, we're using uh, the, the work you're doing to make sure we improve public transport, really important. We think about how people make journeys from home to work. What are the most popular journeys? what are less popular, how we can encourage people to walk and cycle. Uh, massive opportunities here, but also we've, we're making sure we invest in the next generation. One of the big, biggest um, gripes, if you like, uh, people like you have in relation to the future is the, the pipeline coming through. And uh, here in London, we've got some of the world's leading uh, higher education institutions from UCL, uh, King's, Imperial. Uh, you've got the Turin Institute down the road. Uh, we've got our diversity. I'm pleased to hear that. And so massive opportunities, but actually we think it's really important for the public to understand you can provide some of the solutions to the challenges we face. How, for example, do we, do we deal with the issue of uh, older people being lonely and isolated? Massive issue for the NHS. You have a solution in relation to technology being used to make lonely, old, older people not lonely. Uh, so lots of opportunities here. Yeah. And when we wrote the report together last year about AI in, in London, um, we were looking to, to try and work out what are the things that um, you as the, as the mayor can do and, and to make sure that this is the best place to build these companies. What are your, some of your, your, uh, your advice for these companies to make sure that this is, London is where, where they want to come, start, build? Yeah, I mean, the, the headline for those of you who, of you who weren't uh, familiar with the report that was done last year was London has more AI companies than the second and third city in Europe put together, more than Paris and uh, Berlin. Massive amount of investment here, huge number of unicorns. Uh, so it's a really, a really a success story. And that's in the context of the uncertainty around Brexit. Uh, so notwithstanding that our underlying strengths will still uh, be here. Look, my message to anybody thinking about you know, starting up, thinking about scaling up, uh, thinking about expansion is think of London. Massive opportunity here. We've got good examples of multinational companies in tech coming to London and expanding. Google up the road, Amazon, uh, uh, others, uh, uh, Apple but also great companies like Babylon 
expanding and, and having a bigger role. So huge opportunities here. I was at Imperial uh, three weeks ago. They've launched a new centre, doing massive work uh, there. We know the history of DeepMind and their, their links with uh, UCL. So that, that, that's not going to change. Uh, but one of the key things I want to reassure you about is in relation to talent. Many of you have been concerned about the impacts of uh, Brexit. And one of the key things we're doing in relation to uh, the next Prime Minister, I'm, I'm afraid the next Prime Minister won't be chosen uh, using an algorithm uh, by you guys. That'll be Tory MPs, and I know which I prefer. Uh, and it's not Tory MPs. Uh, one of the things he or she needs to do is understand that actually immigration is a huge benefit to our city. And so the talent pipeline is not simply homegrown talent. It's also making sure that we have uh, the talent from overseas coming to uh, our city. You speak to successful tech companies in London. Many of them are Londoners of Estonian origin. They're Londoners are originally from Silicon Valley. They're Londoners originally from Romania or Bangalore. Uh, and that's one of the strengths of our city. And so no matter your size, whether you're, whether you're a Google, uh, whether you're a startup, whether you're you know, a Babylon, you know, this is a place where you can thrive and flourish. My job as the mayor is to create an environment working with the government uh, we can do even better. And you've got quite a captive audience here of thousands. I'm thinking, if you've got one wish for them before we go, what would that wish be? Well, firstly, it's, it's to, to thank you for the work you're doing to give Londoners the skills for the jobs of tomorrow. My one ask from you is, if we're honest, uh, and it doesn't just affect the tech sector, it affects politics, it affects journalism, it affects finance sector, it affects construction, and a number of other sectors, you aren't as diverse as the communities you seek to serve. And one of the things we're trying to do from City Hall uh, is to make sure we have more girls and women entering the tech sector, more people from black, Asian, minority, I think, backgrounds, more people from working class backgrounds entering the sector. It is such an exciting sector. Uh, you know, I was reading this uh, report which said in 20 years' time, 90% of the jobs in London, 90% will be reliant upon tech. Now, uh, the genie's out of the bottle, and, and I think we should be uh, London. Londoners should be surfing this wave of the fourth industrial revolution. My ask of you is to make sure you're taking advantage of the massive potential out there in relation to the pool of people from which you recruit. Uh, we've set up recently, Tabitha, uh, a digital talent program to make sure we give young Londoners the skills they need, the helping hand they need to be employable by you. We're also invested in making sure uh, uh, employers work with uh, Londoners. But if there's one thing I'd ask you to do, is just think about is your place of work reflective of the society you serve. Uh, and the good news is not only is it um, uh, useful for social reasons, for cultural reasons, but the economic case is massive. If you utilize the potential of all Londoners and uh, particularly women and BAME communities, those who are disabled, those from working class backgrounds, it's a massive boon to your business. But also, if you're a customer or a client, there's nothing better than having somebody who's selling you a product who looks like you and empathizes with you and has walked in your shoes. So big ask f from you is to make sure you if you can, help me uh, help Londoners have their potential fulfilled.